Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a tangy citrus juice drink. Very refreshing, but I'm not too sure what citrus fruit's in there, but very nice indeed. Anyway, in the previous video of Airships, we were once again designing and fighting. And if we go over to Design and Fight, Airship Editor, and then open a design, we can go down and we can see that we built the Oxford, which was essentially a platform in order to carry the Suspendium Ray. The original brief and original intent was to have a very fast reactionary vessel, and we have got some of these already built, but they were all about boarding, so they'll be able to get from point A to point B in the campaign normally, and then stop whatever they face via boarding. But we wanted something that was very quick, so it could react very fast, but also be able to destroy the opponent. We went with the ray because it's very, it's got a very good arc of fire and it does very decent damage, and we got, I would, I'd say, moderate success for this. I'd probably say a bit more than that we got a, had a very high rate of success with this thing once we figured out how to use it properly it is very micro intensive you do have to move it around and we use the because because we've got a bridge we have very good orders so every order every every command the command is every two seconds so we can quickly order it to uh, alter altitude or change position so we are out of range and arc of the opponent's weapons and overall very very effective vehicle however we want to step back a bit and instead go with something a little bit sillier because we haven't done that in a while and actually it's it's been it's been an exercise in in iteration as of late a lot of the things we've made we've made and then went no that's over pointed doesn't work and we stripped things off and we've really sort of min maxed it and sort of i've, have, I've had fun with that so we're going to do something similar but we're going to look at a different vessel, which I believe is the Sandwich, and the Sandwich is based around the concept of these aerial charges and the harpoon guns. You go up to an opponent, you harpoon the vessel, you drag it in, and then you wait for the aerial charges to destroy it. However, this vessel is utterly garbage because it is well over pointed at 2199. It is quite slow because of the one engine pod, and because it is quite armoured, if I just open that anywhere, I believe it's got steel armour. Yes, yeah, steel armour. So, basically, it doesn't do what we wanted to do which is go somewhere quickly and then destroy the opponent so we need to iterate on that so let's go back over to airship editor and we're going to see if we can make something that has the same idea and same concept so build it around these aerial charges so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and we don't care about the armor because as we've seen previously, these aerial charges are slightly fumble, but do explode easily. So as soon as one of them goes, the rest go up, and yeah, that's why I don't normally use them. However, we'll take, we will take—we know that this is the case, so we'll make something that is pretty much a one-use thing. We just fling it into the opponent, and as long as it is more expensive, you are overall going to come out uh, on top because well in terms of cost you know you, you, you miss a if we build this to say a thousand that would be nice and if it can destroy something that's maybe what 1200 to 500 then i'd be very very happy and as i said it's a this is just a sort of mess around here and trying something a bit different but we're going to strip it down to the basics so there is the aerial charges there in terms of the propulsion and lift we could go with a large propeller and then if we wanted to a large suspendium chamber but the problem with that is that already it's 756 generic units of currency it has a service ceiling of 356 meters and a speed of 225 which is impressive but none of that i think we none of that is required i think instead what we'll do is go with a standard suspendium chamber like so although i will pull it back a little bit because i want to put the coal in here let's place this in there we're going to put coal next to it and obviously it's going to be quite long but that's not too much of a problem we'll then go over to resources and then coal store and we've got a ladder going up which is important and then we want to add in terms of the propulsion we'll probably go with i say a large propeller is probably too much i don't think that is required however we could go with a standard propeller like so although well not like so because it doesn't fit on the back maybe like that would that function well it would service ceiling is fine at 193 and the speed is actually not too bad on 143 actually let's go to open design and check that again let's go down to the what was it the sandwich speed is 7 73 well we need to at least I would say double it, which we will. We pretty much are on double, a little bit under double, but that's okay. Once we, cons uh, considering though that we not yet put anything else on, 
maybe then a large one of those would work out because we do need the rest of it so let's bring that down to say there would that actually fit on it would actually fit on that doesn't go there but it can go in there which is fine oh no that doesn't that doesn't connect up which is a bit of a shame i tell you what we can do we'll put that there move that down to there that can go to there and that is all connected up excellent okay in fact do we really need this big coal store there we could probably go with a small one let's go over to resources coal store the coal store carries a total of 50 coal whereas the small one only carries 30 is it or 12 so actually we're probably best off going with the coal store although i'm guesstimating that basically it won't last long enough to survive anywhere to to use all of this coal but we'll do what we can so that's that in now we also need some ammo and we could if we wanted to just place one big ammo store there and that would probably be okay although having it more centralized is probably the way forward so we'll place that in like so we are not going to use harpoons i was thinking about whether we should use harpoons or not and i've decided against it simply because the vessels that we'll be fighting are probably going to be more expensive and bigger which means that we need a lot of harpoons in order to hold on to it and even if it's got something like a like, setup like this with this quite large engine on the back a large propeller that's probably got just far too much pull and it'll just go away so instead we're going to go with the the large propeller and instead of trying to grapple and hold it above which by the way this is a huge disadvantage with these things naturally because you have to be below the target um <laughs> i don't think you can flip them actually that would be cool if you could fire them down no you can't because firing them down would be a bomb anyway uh, as i said we we don't want to grab onto them instead we'll utilize our maneuverability in order to stay in position that's going to be the idea for it so that's now in like so we also need some crew and that sort of stuff so we're going to go over to our where is it not on troops no it would be command and crew naturally we'll go to quarters one and then two that brings us up to oh crew of 24 but recommended is 37 so we could put that in there and then put another one in if we wanted to although the problem with that is essentially we are well over crewing it which is something obviously we are desperately trying to avoid the other option then is and also we have got at the moment no way to make this thing move let me go over to the overlays and that's actually decent in the pathing but we don't have and this is a bit of a problem, anywhere to go up to here. And not that we need it, you understand. Not that we need anything up here. But what I was thinking of doing is putting one of the crew quarters in like so, and then having it go up and across. And we can put anything extra in there. We don't need a telescope. We don't need a crow's nest. We do want a cockpit because, well, quite frankly, you should always have some extra bits there. And... Like, I, I, pref I prefer to have a bridge. It is just better. But, at the same time, having a cockpit does seem to work. So, all, not all mutually accessible. We are very much aware. And we need more supply hatches. Supply hatches, we've got 40. Oh, sorry, 14. And Well, that's what we, well, that's what we need. So, over two resources. So, a wooden supply hatch provides eight supply. But a wooden cargo door provides 40 supply. So we don't need either of those. There's two in. That's 16 out of the 14. We just need something extra to go here. And quite frankly, it could just be as simple as putting a deck in there. I'm also very tempted to get rid of the cockpit. I don't know if it's necessary. I really don't know if it's necessary. How much does it cheapen out by? Oh, like 20. No, was it? Very little. 12 is that it it's 12 yep i think i'll just stick with one of those over to our do you want to put fire point in no we don't it's all about the it needs to be cheaper cheap 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 we can't have that in there because then we can't get we can't have access to that and we can't put it there could put it on the back which is completely out of the way from this one so that's actually not too bad so i'm gonna go with that we uh, we still need. I was gonna put a like a, a forty-five degree slope on there, but the problem being is that 
yeah, essentially it wouldn't work because we still wouldn't have access to this. Okay, that will have to suffice. Over to our basics and Coriol with ladder, one, two. We will have the same on that side because it's best to be able to go around that way. And then a couple of shapes and decorations. So we'll go down to this slope here. We will have that set on there. We'll then rotate one, two there. Get a two. Hang on. Now, that's where it is. There we are. That's it. That is it, I think. Hmm. Okay. Call the liquefaction. Don't mind the name. Normally named after towns and stuff. Let's go with... Ooh, that's wrong. Start, start to put a keel on the thing. Okay. I'm going to call it the hull. And save the design. The hull. Save. And let's give this a go. Let's oh, actually we should quickly check the stats. 953, that's bang on the money. I think we said we wanted it up under a thousand, so we've done that. Maintenance, don't really care about. Service ceiling, 114 meters. That's not good. That's a lot lower than I thought we'd get. Speed is good, 165. Crew, 48. Recommended, 41. So we're over crewed. Supply's good. Command every five seconds, not so good. I like every two seconds, but it's based on the size, I think. And that should do it. In fact, I think we can test it. If we go over to, where is it? Modules here. Put, remove the bridge and then put like another one on. Yeah, can you see that? You can see that? It's, you can give commands <laughs> a lot faster. But, I mean, adding on extra bridges is just not great. Every five seconds is... Uh, it's not great. I, I would have liked commands every... Well, ideally, like two seconds, which we've got the... <laughs> which is what we've got on the one we've just made, the Oxford. So, but we'll save the design. We'll give it a go. Uh, so, save design, yes. Overwrite that, yes. And let's see if this is as useless as perhaps you may be thinking. So let's go over to add airship, we'll go down to the hull and we can see that the service ceiling is garbage. So we're probably going to iterate on that. So we're going to place that in there, that's 953. We're going to add the airship and put in something a little bit over pointed. There's a basic there, that's actually not a bad test. The basic is pretty good and we can place it there. And let's give it a fighting chance, let's place it pretty much where we would expect it to be and start the fight. Immediately I'm going to say this move and then go over to there. We need to get beyond its... Oh, there's the torpedoes out. Oh, there's the... Uh, there's them out. That's pretty good. Already good damage there. Yeah, we're going to try and go underneath it and you can see the action very slow, but the damage is considerable. Now, it's, it's trying to go the other way. We have told it to move and there we are. The problem with these things are that the, they're not very accurate as you can clearly see and also you have to be underneath it in order for it to function which is never a good thing and also and I, I'd say this is the main disadvantage there you go there you probably saw what the disadvantage was and that is that the the weapons um, what would you call it its velocity is pathetic the not the shell velocity but the yeah the the, ch the things we fire they're absolutely terrible, so it's very, very, it's, it's problematic. Yeah, that's a loss. So we got some good hits, but we didn't get it destroyed, but we have lost that on the back. Okay, we're going to leave, because that's going to blow up any second, there it goes. Over to the airship editor once again, open the design, and then we'll open up the hull. Now, first things first, I'm going to remove that. I'm then going to put in from the resources here. I'm going to put in a fire extinguisher. Now, that might be... It's not too much. It's not too expensive. How, how, how expensive is it? It's 12. And we had a corridor with ladder, which is 7. So in reality, having that there is only costing us a tiny bit more. In fact, I would say, honestly, putting them in like that is not going to cause us too much of a problem. Service ceiling has dropped down, so I don't know whether or not that's an issue. We might get away with it. I don't know. I think I think we'll save the design. Not a version two, really. We just added a water point there because I believe it was the fire. Well, that and the 
Corpus amount of arrows that we'll find out of uh, that destroy the engine. So let's go over to the. Oh, that's wrong. Go over to combat and then open the hull. So go down to there. Place that in like so. Over to the airship. And we're going to verse the same thing again because I thought that was a reasonable test. And then start the fight. Immediately we'll say move and then move to there. We need to get under it. And there we go. There is the shot out. And for some reason it, it stopped. You see that? It stopped and it's still getting fired upon. There we go. Now we have more command than the basic, which is good. We've already taken taken some severe hits, which is not ideal. I'm actually going to go down here because I think it's going to land on top of us. Yes, it has, and that is a not normally a big problem because, okay, now, now, now it probably is going to be a little bit of an issue. <laughs> now, you can see because of where we are, it's not really a big problem at all because of what we've done, but that's going to be a problem and crunch. So, we have... Oh, there we go. There's our ship. It's going to blow up. No, we've lost one of them, and we've got some fire. But luckily, we can put the fire out. There's another one that's blown up, and... Yeah, it's just going to keep chain reaction. Yeah, we've just got a chain reaction going. You can see it coming across the entire hull <laughs> of the thing. And, um... Right, there we go. That is now down and out. Now, technically, we've lost... Or rather, I would... I think it's more reasonable to say that there's no victor. Hang on. Defeat, although I survived and it's a mobile. I think what it means is we won. Uh, let's go over to the combat again. To the day. We're going to add in the hull. Now, I would say this is probably not something you would run on its own. Because, as you've seen there, you can't finish anything off if it falls out of the sky. Or you get trapped, or whatever. And many other scenarios. Let's go for airship. Let's be a bit of a maverick and put... Oh, I was actually going to say put the Dresden in, which is our... It's not a high-level bomber, it's just a heavily armoured bomber. But, instead what we're going to do is try and out-bomb it. Because we have the speed advantage. I'm going to say ram and just chip the light off the front. Oh, hang on. That's interesting. Don't know if you saw that there. It sort of rammed into us, and because of the damage, it caused the weapon to blow up. And, oh dearie me, yeah, you can see that quite clearly, it has the advantage here. Uh, we've already lost the majority of our weapons, but at this stage, I wouldn't really say that either of us have <laughs> had a great time of it. And remember, that is over 500 points more expensive. Okay. I don't know if there's something to be said by having gaps and so instead of well when one of those aerial charges blows up it doesn't chain but then again that's then getting a bit of a bloat on the original design and I like the way that we've sort of almost lego bricked connected up there um interesting let's leave the fight so oh hang on as just when we did that you can see we've caused all manner of problems for it and we're gonna blow but as a shock vessel that worked quite well. We did considerable damage. Even on the first the first volley of fire, which there was only really one fully volley of fire before we started losing most of those charges, we did considerable damage and really crippled that thing. Let's go back over to Day, over to the airship again, put the hull back in. And yeah, let's have a quick look. Was it the the Dresden? 1538 as opposed to 963. Let's do something a bit silly and put the Coventry in. I'm going to move this further down. Start the fight immediately. I use R for ram because if it goes down, we just want to keep going. There's the shots out. Not great. This just needs a bit more command. That's all it needs at this stage, I think. Because I'm just, I'm just not able to keep up. That's a big bang. Move. Actually, we'll ram. Flip there. Hold back. It's doing considerably more damage to me. Move to there. And there's the shots out. No, I don't think we've done this one. You can see it can outmaneuver us. And because of its design, because it's vertical rather than long, we're, we're not hitting it. Okay. So that has bested us. We expected that. It's almost double the cost. Was it double the cost? Coventry? 1,890 as opposed to 1,000. Yes, that is right. Okay. But let's put something in that we think 
should be able to defeat us. I really don't want to verse that because I think it will absolutely hammer us. There's the original sandwich. So hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have the same armament, but we're faster. High service ceiling, same command. Okay. Also, I've put a telescope on something which ha has harpoon guns. Don't know what I was thinking. Let's go for... Let's go for the Sterling. Very fast vessel, this thing. Which will absolutely shred us to pieces with wooden armor, which is a bit of a shame. And that's an understatement. Let's go for a bit of a ram. Cheeky ram, cheeky ram. Obviously cheeky one. Go right underneath it, and that's a lot of damage, actually, we've already done. Turn it around. You can see it doesn't speed up very quickly, this thing. But there we go, there's... Ah! It's just able to move. Just go back, go back. There we go. See? Just able to move. What I need to do is wait for it to move like that. See where it goes. Follow it myself. Good. It must have a command of two or three seconds. It must do. Because we're getting there, and then it just moves. That's a good hit, though. That's a very good hit. And, ah, it is drifting. Good. Excellent. But you can see that they're not holding onto them charges long enough. I'm going to go down here, just because we want a bit more of a war oh, bit more warning, because if that happens, we need to get out of the way. Although the problem is that, essentially, as I said, if we do manage to destroy it, or have break all the suspendium chambers, it's going to fall out the sky on top of us. Okay, there's a win on the Sterling, which is actually something I didn't expect. Let's go over to the airship again. Put that on there. So that was the Sterling. 1,475. So yes, it's a it's about an extra 50% more. I mean, stuff like this, the York. That's a carrier. Now we know for a fact that will defeat us. Because it's five times the cost. And it's got aircraft that we can't Oh! I say we can't shoot down. They will be taken out if this thing. If this thing goes, if, if it fires and they go into it, they will be destroyed. Okay, let's see what happens then. When we field, say, in this particular case, three of them against the York. Start the fight, immediately we're going to say ram and go to there. Because it's almost certainly going to try and back up. There's the original shots out. And considerable damage to the, the front. In fact, good grief, that's amazingly good damage. Back up to there. Once again, continuing to fire. Sadly, a lot of these shots are premature. You can see they're, they're missing completely. But the damage that they're causing when they do hit is immense. So, versing, putting them like this is... Hell's bells. Really powerful. I don't know how it's still floating. I have no idea. Sadly, we're causing more damage to ourselves than anything else. And that's going to fall out the sky on top of us. But... As I said, as shock vessels, we've just essentially destroyed something that is not five times the cost. Each one of the... The York as opposed to the Hull. The York's five times the cost. But... In this fight here, we've got... How many have we got? We've got three. So 3,000 as opposed to 5,000. And... One could argue that, well, they're going to win the fight. They still have aircraft. See them flying around there. They've got the tri uh, triplanes. And they also have these aerial hazards, which you can see if we zoom right in, are taking damage. You can see the damage on them on there. Still have that there. I can see a ram. can still use it as something... No, we can't. Defeat. So, two disarmed and one survived. That's very debatable. The York technically survived, but it's burning. So in a campaign, that would be gone. Okay. Nice. Let's go back again. Airships. This time we're going to pick the... Oh, do we really want to pick the Excalibur? <laughs> hmm. I mean, go on. It's rude not to, right? Airships. Hull. One. Two. Three. Four, 
five, six, seven, eight. So about half the, well, less than half of the cost of that. Start the fight, go to ram, go there, forward. And I'm guessing that the front end's gonna fall off pretty much immediately. And, good grief. That is shocking. Just how much damage you cause with these things. Ramp to there. One of them's already fallen out of the sky, the other one's losing most of its stuff. You can see that it's actually taking a bit of a beating, we expect that, because these things are in the middle of Grand Keels. So, <laughs> that's giving it a fairly decent of HP. We've sheared off the point of it now, but sadly the bulk of it, which is where all the suspendium chambers are, see all these, all of them are the large suspendium chambers, they're still there. The advantage is that basically it's only got a couple of machine guns left and the bombers, but there's nothing we can do about the rest of it. We didn't get underneath it fast enough. I'm going to leave that there, go back in and try that again. Because that would probably work. Snowy night. Why not? Airships. I don't even look for the name. I just look for the cost. Uh, I can go in there. And flat ground is actually advantageous. For us. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. That's fine. Start the fight. Immediately. Ram. And we're actually going to go and try and go past it. Because we want to get more shots around the back here. And we've already fired out. It's taken a lot of damage. In fact, these ones at the back have gone a little bit too far. So I'll say move. I'll say move to there. I'm not ramming them. Just go further back. And there's all the shots. We're putting these onto rapid fire. Because, quite frankly, more shots out the better in this case. Because all we're trying to do is take out this back bit all we're doing. Strategically, <laughs> trying to get that down. The problem is that it's burning, but we're not able to keep up with it. Come on. Let's just say ramp to there, keep going back, and it seems to me that that has taken probably enough damage for it to be classed as gone. In fact, there's three of them suspension chambers gone, there's a fourth going up as well got one left. By the way, that's not the only lift it has. It has got a lower, you can just see it in the hull here, a lower row of suspendium chambers as well. So, once again, for half the cost, we've caused considerable damage. Now the question is probably, the question we probably need to ask is how much damage could you do with e the same amount of points? Well, I would say that probably it would be useless because you wouldn't be able to field it. And at this stage, that's pretty much it. You know, you've done the damage with those, you can't really move them any further, job done. If you had, say, 7,000 versus this 16,000, I mean, it's still taking damage, mainly because of the weight of its, of its crashing through the ground. I mean, yeah. Is that still in command? It's not. If you had seven thousand versus that. I, I, I don't know what you'd be able to get seven thousand wise to be able to beat that, apart from just copious amounts of boarding. But combining those, let's do what we'd actually have a proper fight with. So over to combat. We'd go for I think a nice little rain. So add airship. We're going to add in the Coventry. We're going to add in the Should we have the Barry? We'll have one of those. And the Dresden. Okay. 4,000. Just reposition them. Take advantage of what they can. Uh, do. Airship. And then we're going to have, against that, one, two hulls. Three hulls, actually. We'll go with three. Why not? And how much have we got left? Couple of thousand. A couple of thousand. What can we put against a couple of thousand? <laughs> the original sandwich. So that's the version two. Still garbage. <laughs> still didn't work. It's, it's, it's still got. It's got even more. It's, it's even worse because it's um, it's quicker. Yes, but it's overpointed. It's slower than what we've got, and the speed is garbage. 
So what can we have? We'll have a sterling. Why not? We'll have a sterling in here. And we're a little bit overpointed. 4364 as opposed to 4314. But we'll start the fight. I'm going to bring these underneath it, like so. There'll be some shots going out there. You can see we are able to get underneath it, underneath the Coventry here. And what we're doing here is moving that to there. I'm going to move that to there. That we're going to apparently do something. Oh, I think I've, yeah, I've put folks in the firefighting. So this is a more reasonable fight than what we would expect to be uh, doing. I'm just taking out the barry here. There you go. And it's went right over the barry made a mistake by going over there. The damage already on them. Very good. I think they've got cultist crew as well, you know. I'm pretty confident they have. We'll ram into the back there. Let's see what we can do. So, using them as shock vehicles, getting them right forward and cause to cause considerable damage. And not even not even not it's just not just the damage, it's just the the collateral <laughs> just the chaos that they cause is is good enough. It's good enough. I mean we were overpointed a bit, but we have managed to win that fight. That's pretty much gone. We're just taking out the last of the weapons. But this is still got this is still got some though, so I need to make sure that I don't get bombed off that. I'm actually gonna go on aim fire in a second as well. There we go, aim fire. I'm gonna put the focus on shooting as well. There we go. And that should be it. Yes, there it is. So that is the hull. Moderate success, I'd say. Pretty much is... I think that's all we could really expect from it. I think that's all we could really expect from it. Considering that the we did open this with... We want to make a variation on the, the sandwich. And a good one. The original idea was to pare it down. Min-max the build. Make sure that it is just fit for its original purpose and not bloated. So... It's fast. It's not armoured at all. It blows up very quickly. There may be some argument in putting some better armour on it, even if we just upgrade it slightly to, say, steel armour. But then again, that's going to add another nearly 300 on top of it. Service ceiling is reduced even further, and the speed is brought right down. So actually, I think that's not too bad. But I would like to know what you think we should do in terms of iteration, any changes, alterations, etc. Overall, happy with what it does. Not convinced that I would feel this over something else that's a grand. <laughs> it's certainly not the most efficient weapon, but it does have its purpose. You can see all the chaos that it, it, it can cause there. What you'd probably feel this against is very large fleets that have a lot of small vessels, perhaps. That might be the way forward if, they, if it's like a swarm fleet you're versing. This just puts so much stuff in the air, it does a lot of damage. You could say that Flak would do the same. We also have made... Actually, I think we... I don't know if we've made it, but we would have certainly discussed it. Have a, a ground vessel with these on. The problem with that is anything that's really high service ceiling, or even a moderate service ceiling, it's never going to hit anything. Not just because of the limited range, but because of the slow, to, uh, slow speed of the, of the projectile. Either way, have had good fun building that, and I do think it has its place... Certainly you wouldn't be fielding that as a line vessel, that would be more right. They've got this, that and the other, let's, you know, fight something. Let's fight against against that with, with this thing. Um, I'll tell you what it would be good against. the In the campaign, if you've got the clockwork bees. The clockwork bees or the, or the wasps? Either way, the clockwork things. Because it causes a lot of damage and it's really slow. It would probably do quite well against that. Either way, hope you have enjoyed the build. I've certainly uh, had a nice mess around and enjoyed building this thing. If you have any suggestions for changes, alterations, revisions, etc., then by all means let me know. If you have any ideas for builds that we can go ahead and try out, then once again let us know in the comments. As always, hope you have enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.